Hi everyone. Hello. Um, uh, ich bin Samara. I'm Samara Chadwick. I'm a, a documentary filmmaker and a curator. And it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you to this talk today with um, artist Julian Buenicki. Uh, I was lucky to meet Julian through this project that's been running for the past year, um, for the whole duration of 2020 with the Goethe Institute Mexico. Uh, we're uh, in, in uh, sorry, the Goethe Institute in Montreal, which was a project bringing together artists from Mexico, uh, Canada, where I am currently, Germany and the United States to discuss um, immersion and um, and climate science. So we're basically bringing together about 30 different artists and scientists to develop new projects um, that were kind of on the forefront of, of immersion and using the kind of current data, uh, climate data. So it was a real pleasure to meet Julian. He came highly recommended from so many different people. Um, he seems like a name who's very well known um, in both Germany and in Mexico. Uh, and he also has just this incredible mind, <laughs> as you will soon um, discover. Uh, he has talents span many different disciplines, uh, coming both from a really extensive background in music and composition and also uh, immersive technologies. So he, he names himself a hybrid artist and XR composer, which seems pretty accurate. Um, he has founded a company called Audition Records, which has published um, over 130 different international releases. He is also a teacher. He's taught new media art in Mexico City um, and also in Valencia. Uh, and as a musician, he works with vocal trance channeling, which I want to hear more about, and has performed extensively, extensively in Mexico and in Europe. Today, we're going to get to know one of his um, more recent works, the Codex Holofrenicos, but we're going to talk kind of broadly about your work as well. So welcome, Julian. <laughs> Thanks, Samara, for the nice uh, introduction. Um, really nice to be here uh, in Median Saga. Munich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks to the entire team for making this possible. Um, Julian, I kind of want to hear a bit about your, um, just your process as an artist. Um, if you want to just give us like a, a quick, I, I just did kind of the bio, which are the main kind of um, accolades and, and numbers of your, of your life, but I'd love to hear more about your, your creative process and how you came the idea of combining music with these interactive capacities. Okay, so mainly my main interest is connected to liminality, all the different ways to arrive to liminality, lucid dreams and immersive technology, for example, that's one. And I consider dreams is one of the oldest immersive technologies, so I inspired a lot of my work on, on that direction, also because I'm Mexican and I'm trying to to reach a different uh, perception than the one amazing research uh, done by Western culture, that of course all this started there, but then trying to give a more personal approach connected to my own culture. Uh, in, in that sense, uh, always I have like a divided profile as a musician and who was working in interactive technologies, virtual reality, video games, 3D. And as an artist, it was always kind of hard uh, to achieve uh, like the like the hybrid uh, point of, of my own research, so I decided and started evolving into this holophrenic theater concept. That mainly holophrenic comes from holograms, all the connected things uh, referring to immersive technologies and dreams, <laughs> uh, and and the theater is more connected to the performative uh, approach as a musician, as an interpreter, as a performer, no? and connected to any kind of different, yeah, but mainly connected to composition, but yes. And then is when I started, of course, mixing with, with a lot of, of things. For example, to see the scores, now we are in Codex Holophrenic, Holophrenicus, to see the scores as the instrument, to see virtual rally, reality environments as the score, to see us as, again, immersive technologies connected, no? So I'm trying to make a, a merge between all, all the different approach where we really don't do, we don't depend on devices. The magic always has to be done as developers, designers, or creators. We have to insist in human technology. So devices, they have to be for us just a tool. And we don't have to expect uh, to that the devices, are do, they will do all for us. 
So in all the interactions I'm trying to develop, for example, connected to the codex, it's not just that you put the tablet or the cell phone and, and then the app is going to start uh, working and doing all for us. I really want that you work between the distance, between the, the cell phone as a controller uh, and the uh, prints, in this case, the codex, no? the score, and the relation between also the, the hand and the distance between the camera and the hand and the, and the, and the hand and the prints. So already in this sense, then you can start extending the cell phone and the scores as an instrument. So that's more or less connected to, to this kind of performatic approach. I want to use all the immersive technologies as instruments, as musical instruments, as narrative instruments. I love that idea. <laughs> it's so novel and yet makes a lot of sense. It does feel like a dream state. I, I'd love to, before we meet the codex, um, can you tell us a little bit about how they're built and what the images are that you use and the different sounds that you are incorporating within them? So, so mainly I have kind of lucid dreams in Samachal. So a, a lot of the things I'm doing always, I just remember the kind of uh, sensations of some dreams and I try to try to bring all these abstractions and all, all these figures that I don't understand to re 3D representation. So I model them in 3D softwares, I texturize them. And then I work with Unity Video Game Engine where I don't use any more 3D rendering. I screen capture all from the video game engine. So these are high quality, I have to connect my battery so An apology for that. It's okay. I'm just <laughs> pouring myself tea. Oh, okay. So, 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 yeah. So, so, so mainly they, they are, uh, yeah, are screen captures from the video game engine. So already, these scores is more like a traditional thing. You make a score, but already there is the world there. So I can do the augmented reality piece, but already there is a world to already start working on the virtual reality environment that also is interactive, like mm -hmm. parallel works as Umbelton and these other commissions. Yeah. So, so yeah, basically, and then uh, it has 200 interactions mm -hmm. uh, that they are located around the map. For the people who use uh, augmented reality, mainly it's based on black and white in a great gamma. So you are recognizing more or less black and white patterns. So then you just define and you start composing over that. And then I connected to this vocal trans, uh, vocal trans channeling. I did around 1,200 voices, all in the register between throat singing, that is between oh, the wow. bad things, and then with the contrast, the normal. So I was doing more or it's less. all your voice. Yeah. So all the sounds are based on voice, uh, grouped in sextet and octet. So more or less we have 1,000 to 1,500 uh, voices all expanded over the codex. And then just by memory, you start, like, as, like a user, you start finding where the sounds are, you let them breathe, and then you start making your own kind of choreographies of hand, trying to make like, yeah, to start kind of composing. So more or less that's a game of, to have it like a, yeah, a, a table, a codex where you can, yeah, where, where you can mainly do the music, so you don't have to wait. The, the score is instrument. Should we should we yeah. check it out? Yeah. You want to show us? Yeah. So I'm gonna switch uh, to the other camera. So we're and, just gonna pin uh, Julian's video. Uh, okay. And now I'm gonna load the app. You need to see me for a while. And Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna use two speaker. Okay. And now I'm gonna open my app, my Unity app. Is is loading? Mm -hmm. and, uh, for this one, uh, I use Euphoria. Normally, also I work with Arcor when I use targets. And uh, something really important is that okay. So here we are. 
as you see, I just register with the camera, and now I'm just going to start like, yeah, playing. Sometimes you will see that telephone sometimes. OK. <laughs> That was it. I'm gonna switch to the other camera. It's so beautiful, man. Okay. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I like. I feel like I was being transported while I'm sitting here in in rural Canada on a computer. And for you, you're like actually dancing with these. Yeah, and, and at the end, it's really nice because mainly all the things that I do, I don't want to lose this kind of uh, yeah. 
game thing that for for in fact is like playing like a child because you are in the floor moving your hands and imagining where are the sounds and trying to construct some kind of narrations and and all connected to to the singing mm -hmm. for me is very important because for example i never attended to classes so and and really something that is is not a lie in fact it's quite real is that i didn't know that I could sing, but I was memorizing complete uh, songs or soundtracks, themes. And then when I was a child, always I was singing with kind of, with this kind of opera <laughs> falsetto things. And I was saying, what the When I was waking up, I was trying to do it and I said, wow, I can do it. So it was really, really like this message, like I listen music, I kind of understand music. And then I was saying, Maybe I, I have to try it. And then I realized it, that I could sing. So it was like a kind of a, a communication. So for that, that's why for me it's so important to connect this, all these choir things and all these kind of oniric, dreamy sensations for the music that I try to compose. Can you tell us a bit about this vocal trance channeling? Yeah, mainly it's connected to all the liminal, liminal states, to all the originary cultures, that mainly you are on trance. At the end are some exercises they exist in all the pre-Buddhism bond, in like all the kind of chants that at the end is a relation between how you breathe uh, and repetition. Mm. So yeah, and in Western culture, in fact, connected to uh, like to the Jean du Dumas show 1,300 is connected to, to have a string pedal. Because once you have a pedal, then you can sing on top and start making all the harmony. So I think it's, it's in all the music, in all the religious music, also from Western culture, of course, and mm. uh, in all the original uh, native music. So at the end, I just start singing motifs and I really just disconnect from reality and go away and I feel happiness and a complete freedom and liberty because I'm learning. So this holophrenic concept comes from there. I, I, I really believe that when I sing, I don't have a genre, I don't sing a genre in both directions, musically and simple. I'm just holophrenia. It's like mm. this character comes to me so I can sing like a shark, like a woman, if I can talk, arrive to the register. But if I'm conscious, I cannot arrive maybe to that kind of tones or that kind of distances that mm. I can. So I really believe, and I just let the, that music lead me into this trust. Mm. It's got this like, I'm wondering, because you're basically inviting us into your trance and into your dreams with this project. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's got elements of the theremin, like the yeah. this instrument, but it also is also connecting these visuals with these sounds. And I'm wondering if you have a bit of a, like a synesthetic, do you know, like synesthesia where you have like associations of sounds with colors. Like how do you pair the colors and the, the images and the sounds? I think just conceptually, because for I really don't have this, if I, I don't see colors. Okay. I have a friend who sees it, so this is, for example, another topic. The only thing is that I feel energies, and this is another mm -hmm. topic, because I feel how my body changes while I'm singing, and I'm convinced that there is, that I'm going to say the one phrase that is really important. I, I truly believe that I just came to life to learn my song. So I'm just trying to sing the best as I can, and hopefully the last day when I'm here in Terranal World, I just want to sing my song. Hopefully, <laughs> even with Alzheimer, whatever situation, I truly want to sing my last song. So I think this is like my, my kind of object. I'm just trying to learn how to, which one is my song. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I, this, I think we're running out of time. I have one last question. How are you imagining people interacting with these works, like both within COVID and, and in like a dream world? How, how are matching the, Matching or? People, how do you imagine other people um, interacting uh, with the codex? Uh, I truly believe that they just have to try, yeah, to not to give a, a lot of power to the devices mm -hmm. and they really have to interact more and more. That For me, this is a game. For example, to make a picnic, they go for a picnic, they print this uh, on clothes and then we play around, we have safe distance and again, maybe we don't use any more the app and then we all together start singing. For me, technologies are an invitation for human technologies, uh, for liminal technologies. Or 
more originally or originary, yeah, knowledge. That's really beautiful. I'm so glad that we got to talk a bit more today, Vinian. <laughs> yeah, thank you a lot for inviting Thank you for taking time. And thank you to Zeka and to the whole team at Median Tag at München yeah. um, for this opportunity. Yeah, thanks a lot to XR. Right. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.